Can I ask each of you about the legend that is John Lennon? Because you were there at the start. <laughs> yes. Uh, obviously, the legend has probably clouded the reality mm -hmm. um, to a certain extent. So, um, well, no. what's your take on him? Well, when the name him. Lennon comes up, what well, do you think? Well, I met him through a guy called Ivan Vaughan, who I met at the Institute, and we became buddies. We're talking about 1953 here, when I was 11. And then two years on, Ivan said, Come and meet my friends and I. I said, why do you want to meet your friends? So I've got friends of my own where I live. Because I lived in Lance Lane, Walton, off Walton Road. He lived up in Walton, somewhere I knew. Well, I rode over one afternoon, and I was riding into uh, Vale Road, where I had lived. And there was a gang of lads walking down. And I knew one, Pete Shotton, I knew Nigel Wally, and another tussle head lad I didn't know. And I got introduced, and his name was John Lennon. And he had a book called The Daily Howl which he was very proud. He was a very shy boy, really. He wasn't sort of forthcoming in any way. But I thought, this guy that wrote this or depicted these cartoons had a great sense of humor. I could really link with this fellow. We became buddies. And uh, the next couple of years, we spent a lot, a lot of time on the hill in Coldstone's Park, uh, playing full. He'd have his mouth full, and then the quarry went full. That's how I met John, through a mutual friend, Ivan Bowen. The quarry men were formed. What was your part in the quarry men? Well, um, Bill Smith never turned up for any rehearsals. He was the first on the TGS base, and John said, Do you want to come in on? Yes, I've got a chance to get on the mic and sing a few songs. Yeah. And then, did I know? We never got near the mic, because there's only one mic, and then they had the mic. But I was on the TGS base. Much to my embarrassment, got home. <laughs> Me and Rudy and Magnificent he was on the teacher's space. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you wouldn't need any moodier on the banjo, would well, you? Well, it's easy to be moody on a banjo. <laughs> <laughs> Colin, well, your take Eric, on John. Eric Griffiths that introduced me to John, because mm -hmm. uh, once the quarry band was in the early stages of being formed into a group, I bought a small drum kit from Frank Cassius, and Eric, as soon as he heard I bought a drum kit, came up to my house to see me and invited me down to his house. So. The fact that I had a drum kit, I was invited to join the quarry band because... Drummers were few and far between. Well, I didn't know any other drummers, so yeah. I was in. Yeah. <laughs> I think it wasn't the drums that were few and far between, really. The guys who had drums, because that's, yeah. that's yeah. the only reason I got in, because I had a banjo. Right. Not because I could play it, because I only bought it the day before. So banjo drums. If you could play an instrument, yeah. the question went out, do you want to join the group? <laughs> right. It was the group, not the band. Always the group. Always the group. And what, what sort of music were you playing at that point? I mean, who, who were your inspirations? How, how did music come into your life? Danny Donegan started it. My inspiration, inspiration was me. <laughs> yeah, it was I don't mean that. Though. It was Ronnie Donegan's Rock <laughs> Island Line. And somebody mentioned Albert Lee earlier. Well, I, I went to see Albert Lee talking in uh, Regent Sounds in Denmark Street only two weeks ago. And the first words he said were, if it wasn't for Lonnie Donegan and Rock Island Line, I wouldn't be here. And that goes for so many of them, Van Morrison. So he's doing a world tour as well. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. And uh, so that was, the, that was the guy for us. So we started off, when I first joined the Quiet Men, it was all skiffle. I mean, the whole, the Lonnie Donegan uh, yeah. songbook, such as it was. And then, of course, rock and roll, started to come in and they started to play more and more rock and roll so i didn't like that so much which is uh, why they keep pulling my leg about it <laughs> but uh, so it was donnegan to start with and then people found the same three chords worked for rock and roll so they started playing more and more rock and roll that's how it happened well i think john himself he was you know it was different things to all different people. Some people liked him, some did, people didn't. Parents certainly didn't like him. Why? Why did the parents It was always to refer to as that Lennon because they all thought that, you know, the parents thought he would uh, you know, he was a take us into... I think he gained a reputation. Did, did, did he lead you astray once? No, he didn't. No, no I had no problem with John. You were already astray. He didn't well, lead me astray. I think he led Pete Shotton and Nigel Wally and Ivan Vaughan astray. I mean, he, he, in our house, he was known as that Lennon, as in stay away from mm. that Lennon. <laughs> yeah, certain people you were told to stay but away from. Me, me, Aunt Mimi apparently thought the sun shone out of his various orifices, but um, that wasn't the case. <laughs> Everybody should have such an aunt. Well, an, an aunt? I thought you were going to say everybody should have such an aunt. Nonsense, boy. Sorry. Yeah. Well, no, it's from Liverpool, then. I can't just stop We can argue that point. We can argue that point. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I, have. I like it. Sorry. I have enough. We have enough. I'm not skipping you. 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 I'm not skipping
What? Just, I never had any stick at all. Well, anyway. <laughs> people say, where do you come from? <coughs> uh, I can say, Walton. Oh, Walton. Said, no, oh, Walton. Yeah. These, I said, Walton's where the jail is. And they said, Walton. They always say, oh, the posh part, don't they? Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Even yeah. now. Even Won't now. be tarnished being slightly posh. You that it's always in Liverpool. Liverpool doesn't really do posh though, does it? So it is it is a strange. Well, but it's posh enough. Oh, I say that to you three, but it's the only JB Sports with an evening wear department, isn't it? In <laughs> You're on the back of the truck. You're on the back of the line. The Watson Village Fate. Yeah. Um, did you any of you did it occur to any of you that fifty nearly sixty years later, you'd probably be down the Calvin playing uh, same Doing the same, same, same set. Yeah. I mean, I mean, how strange is this life traveling around the world to Vegas and places like that? Well, when did this all take off again? Because it's sort of been like two lives of the Quarrymen. Well, I, 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 I left the Quarrymen in 1959. Right. And we didn't see was it music. musical differences, personal differences? No, was drinking too much. Story's too long to tell. I can't tell you the story. Yeah. What drinking is that, babe? But um, yeah, I left then, and I was, well, there was John Paul George and Duff and myself at that time. These lads had, had sort of already left, and I left, mm. and um, we hadn't really seen each other for the best part of you know 30, 40 years. And then St. Peter's Church Hall in Walton was on the threat of being pulled down because we're in such a state of disrepair. But um, well, you have to remember, we, we met at the cabin first, though, didn't we? Yeah, you yeah, was going to skip that. Yeah, well, you want to skip yeah, that? Yeah, you skip that. What was the girl who. Jean, 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 Jean Cattle was the. She was like run the Beatles Peace Society or whatever. Right. Liverpool, so yeah. she contacted us all individually and said, do you, want to, do you want to recreate that day John met Paul? Yeah. We want to have a uh, procession on the back of a lorry and perform in the field and have a dance in the evening. And would we do it for a one off concert, you see? So to I raise said, money. Yeah. I said, I haven't played drums for 40 years. There was no good then. I'm certainly not going to try and drag my war drums off the wardrobe. So I declined. You still had them? In, they're in the Beatles Museum now. Oh, really? I really? Uh, so I declined initially. But then I think Rod phoned me. There was a lot of phone calls going around. So in the end, we said, OK, what we'll do, we'll meet in Len's house. Rod came up from London, Eric bought himself a guitar, because he didn't have a guitar, he bought a guitar and travelled down from Edinburgh. To beat the fans from the door, you know what I mean, or from America and uh, Japan. And then we met in Len's house and we all sat round and Rod had come up with a T-chest bass and a washboard. And we just sat round and said, right, what are we going to play? So someone said, well, you know, last John. Or... And we just started playing and we sounded instantly, than we, do now. instantly we, were, we were probably like 18 year old lads again. It was yeah. an incredible we, we were fresh, weren't we? We were fresh. Very you are cheap in all those cosmetics. Yeah. <laughs> deja, deja vu all over again, not in college. So that was it. Pete Shelton said, look, if we can do that on stage and the people understand what it's all about, I think we should do it. So yeah. we all just decided we would do it, that one off concert. And as the time got near, and I got a bit panicky and I said to phone Rod, I said, look, we can't just go on stage having, you know, played once in Len's house, we've got to re rehearse at least once. So I, I got hold of the local vicar and he said, yeah, we could go up on the, the Thursday, Friday night, I think, wasn't it? So we went up the night before and we rehearsed in, in the hall, there, not the main hall, the small hall. Oh, St. Peter's. Uh, and that's, yeah, St. Peter's. So that's where we had, like, right. Len's house and a couple of weeks later in the, the small hall, which mm. is the Simon Peter's uh, centre now. And then on the Saturday, we just did what we did well, the news got around the world and the quarryman had reformed. Yeah. yeah. Big headlines right. in the NME. So, so, then, you know, <laughs> so then, really, I mean, we did a couple of other gigs which we weren't expecting to do anymore. We only doing this once. Yeah. But then, after a couple of local gigs, well, I think Derby was one, uh, some guy said, Do you want to come to Cuba? Right. So we all said, Wow, oh, I swell, bring yeah. your wives, they said, come to Cuba for a week. So he said, walk up to the cockpit, say, fly me to Cuba or I'll play you, the guitar down your ear, so he flew us to Cuba. So that, that was it then, it hasn't really stopped since. We've done Japan, no, we've done it's Russia, been, we've been it's to Russia three times. Hill, hasn't it, really? Where does it work best? I mean, America, I'm sure, must absolutely enjoy America's pretty good cool because there's no language barrier. I, yeah, can, yeah. I, can, get eat, I can eat the food there. Mm -hmm. uh, I did enjoy Japan, although I had to live mm -hmm. on. Guinness, because that, you know, I couldn't eat the Japanese food that you were throwing out. Germany's very good, the Germans like us. What, what kind of audiences 
Oh, 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 and the first three rows knew all the words of all the songs. It was oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Whenever yeah, we forgot true. anything, we just read it. You yeah. know, yeah. there's no problem at all. Somebody was the teachers had Tommy guns behind them. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it was only a couple of years ago. They were lovely. They were lovely. <laughs> Don't you think? Just, just, throw throw those in, from just throw those incontinent pads back into the audience. <laughs> Colin <laughs> hadn't touched his drum kit in 40 years. What about you two? Oh, oh, you? Oh, well, I could play yeah. guitar. I hadn't touched his drum kit. Well, I was so, playing that tea chest. So, like? Did you get the Boeing book or what? Well, 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 I, I mean, learned to play a few chords. Yeah. You know, because I'm just watching ching, ching, your ching. sound check, and I, it's, um, it was amazing, amazing it? wasn't it? <laughs> it was very, very, very good. Probably yeah. better than the, the proposals. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> I don't like playing them. You don't like playing what? Guitars. Do you not? I can't play it. He can play it. Is he being sure honest? He, I mean, is he being honest? He poses very... No, he I mean, looks a, lot, a lot of good singers yeah. don't really play the guitar very much. Have you ever seen people like Hank Williams? Or, or you know, a lot of yeah. people, you know, they're singing down the phone, they, they move down the microphone and they move well, the guitar. Well, you probably down to the level of Hank Williams. Williams. It was pretty good. Yeah. 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 Len makes up for it by no, his I'm magnetic, magnetic personality, yeah. don't you, Len? Yeah. Yes, as well. Yeah. It's like attraction, man. The Calvin tonight, and it's a very special night. Um, being the 75th birthday of John no. himself. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on that? Ah. What would his thoughts I be on he'd, this? I think he'd be laughing his head off to Do you me. think uh, so? I should think possibly, yeah. Go on. We were in New York on his 70th birthday, so we thought, well, we? 75th birthday will be here. Yeah. And uh, eight, 80th birthday, it'll be an well. electric wheelchair rally. He's <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry, laughs> <laughs> got Willie, of course. Yes, yes, well, the story was. goes on. What have you got coming up in the uh, next year or so? Um, how come? Oh, not the stairs to Hoover? <laughs> uh, dog means yeah. walking twice a day. The wife it's needs a to drive. I need to drive the wife to the shops. And that's my life. That's what keeps him level. Stops him <laughs> getting big headed and being a, a big international star, really, yeah. isn't it? Like, yeah. Keeps his feet on the ground. Yeah. I mean, all it takes is a couple of phone calls. You know, well, and emails. 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 Yeah. emails. Yeah. These emails. These emails. emails. Can we do it like so? Okay. We're talking about Germany, aren't we? Well, anywhere. We're talking about anywhere. No, but oh, we're talking about, about we're talking about talking about Germany. Yes, are Somebody mentioned Kaiserslautern. It's easy for you to say. Did you drink it? Bon. Can you drink it? <laughs> no, no, no need to be rude. <laughs> I'll find a Kaiser Leiden. <laughs> Uh, we usually do a gig in Spain every year for Charity. Medicine Sans Frontieres, the Spanish yes, Medical yeah. Sin Fronteras. We're not sure where that's going to be. Yeah, that was okay. Spain. No, we don't. Oh, Medical oh, Sin Fronteras. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like it. Well, oh, oh, they come in, you know. <laughs> Uh, didn't, they, didn't the Americans bomb something? Yeah. Quite <laughs> sorry, we don't talk about that. Yeah. Oh, we don't talk about this. Yeah. Sorry, yes, <coughs> sorry. There's this collateral damage. Sorry, this honestly, is, this is sorry, yes. a phony show. It's a phony show. It's a phony show. We don't talk about things. So they, 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 they gigs they appear like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't bother us. We we normally do bad. Ten a year or something like that, okay. because that, we don't want to be overexposed. You know, that, that, I mean, this year we've only done that. six. We put, yeah. we played in Liverpool four times this yeah. year after tonight. Okay. But the most we ever did, that's we did. We, that's how we keep fresh. We yeah. did 17 gigs in 21 days in the states. We toured all the way across the, the states, mm -hmm. the middle, mm -hmm. New York, Los Angeles, yes. Las Vegas, the whole shooting match, and that was that was hard going. And we ended up in New York on John's 70th birthday. The first half of the gig was people like Pete Seeger, Tom Paxton, Who's he? Earl Slick. Oh, oh, we know you don't know who yeah. Pete Seeger is. Yeah. We've had that question before. And then the he second half, know. we played no, Open Now, and they all sat in with us. Yeah, right. So we played Midnight Special with Pete Seeger, <coughs> Rock Island Line with Tom Paxton, and at one time we had the Quarrymen Big Band. There were about ten guys on stage playing. That was real fun. So Sound we thought we've got to do something tonight, yeah. so here we are. Yes. Can you give me some idea of what you will be doing well, chink, 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 chink. Uh, chink, chink, Well, we're playing chink, 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 half a dozen skiffle numbers, right? and we get one or two people to play washboard with us. Fantastic. And then uh, we, we move on to the... We have a little, little, little chat between the songs sometimes. Uh, stories. The silly stories, stories that stories. you've been hearing here tonight, yeah, yeah. maybe a few you make your embroidery right. and stuff. And right. then uh, we move on to the, the rock and roll stuff. And we wake Len up and make him sing some rock and roll. And you think I'm joking? <laughs> I can't wait. 
Rhodes. No, you think I'm joking about waking him up. <laughs> That's what I mean, he knows that. Rhodes, Len, Colin, absolute delight oh, to meet you all. It's been a delight to <laughs> believe you all. It's been a delight to be met. <laughs> Never ever go away. Honest, no, this is sheer joy. This is well, I'm gonna keep the glory, man. <laughs> <laughs> nice thank you all. Thank Absolute. you. Absolutely. One the check in the post? Most certainly is. Oh, small check. Thank you. Good luck Are tonight. we going for a beer, though, lads? I think it's the least. Yeah, thank it's good. Yeah. Are you OK? Thank I'm you. Joking. I'm joking. You must wear a spiritual home, lads. It's in front of a Guinness pump. Did you hear 